Welcome to Gaming Guide, and everybody, this is Andrew, and I'm once again joined by Mike. Hey, everybody. <laughs> and we have two special guests for this episode here in season two. We've got Lena. Hi. And Megan. Hello. And you guys are, you, well, Megan, you still work at the Japan Foundation, and Lena, you have worked at the Japan Foundation before, correct? Yes, correct. Okay, so if you could tell us like a little bit and how you got uh, started with the Japan Foundation. Uh, let's go with well, Lena, you were chronologically you were first, right? <laughs> yeah, I was first with that whole deal. Okay, yeah. so uh, yeah, if we could hear how you uh, started with that gig, that would be cool. Yeah, so I was born in Tokyo, Japan, and I lived in Japan until I was about five or six. I didn't speak any English, but my father lived in Japan for 19 years, and he was originally from New York, and he traveled all over the world, but he landed in Japan. And during the 70s, English teaching was like a really good, lucrative job opportunity. So he stayed in Japan and met my mother, who was a Japanese teacher, because he wanted to learn how to speak Japanese. So he was looking for a Japanese teacher, and my mom happened to like know his friend, and that's how they met. And then my mom was like, because being half or half Japanese, they thought that we would have better opportunities in the United States. She kind of asked my dad, like, can we move to the U.S., and what would you like to do? So he got a Ph.D. at University of New Mexico for intercultural communication. So that's kind of how we moved to the U.S., and then there were no opportunities in New Mexico. So but <laughs> we had like a... Um, he had a really good cohort program at the PhD program. So we need someone who um, worked at Cal California University, uh, CSUN, so California State University in Northridge. And that's how we ended up in LA. And my mom resumed her Japanese teaching. So Japanese teaching has been kind of a part of my life. And speaking Japanese, I was required to speak Japanese at home, like no English whatsoever. So that was kind of oh, like our environment. Okay. And so I was able to maintain it like heritage wise but also kind of like anime manga games and all that kind of stuff but okay I, yeah i took japanese in college but i also volunteered and i kept my connection with teaching and then i happened to stumble upon japan foundation los angeles my mom knew them before too but i happened to stumble upon them like 2017 and for tea time and then they were looking for like participants and i'm like oh it's like a Japanese language event. I want to participate. So that's kind of how I started connecting with Japan Foundation. And then after like doing it for a year, year and a half, they were like, oh, we're looking for someone for our program, like Japanese language program. Would you like to work with us? And that's kind of how I started my um, time in Japan Foundation and stayed there for about like um, until 2021. So about a little over two mm -hmm. years or so. So that's kind of like my history with Japan Foundation, how I ended up there. Your dad, your dad, your dad is white. Your mom is Japanese, right? Yes. And your, but your dad speaks Japanese like fluently. Yeah, he lived in Japan for 19 years, and at first he didn't speak Japanese at all. But mm. he happened to be in Okinawa. He traveled Japan all over, and then he met someone from Osaka. And even though they couldn't communicate via language, they really mm. like vibe well. So he was <laughs> like. It would be so much fun if I could actually verbally communicate with <laughs> like everyone. So that's how he was like, I want to study Japanese. And that's kind of how he formally decided to study. But he can't read or write. He can only speak uh, Japanese. Oh, wow. Yeah. Does he, is, it, is it unaccented, though? Or it's, he's got a little bit of an accent? No, actually, he doesn't really have much of an accent. And he's very kind of like his personality is a little bit more kind of like quiet. He's more academic. Mm -hmm. So his personality, the way he um, speaks Japanese is very um, familiar to Japanese people. So they're always like kind of <laughs> laughing when they were like, oh, your dad is so tall. He was like, yeah, yeah. So they hold them and like, oh, no, not really. Kind of like the humble <laughs> kind of thing. So it's kind of right. I've been very fortunate to be in an environment where um, both parents are very familiar with different languages. My mom mm -hmm. studied German and studied, lived in Germany for a little bit, too. So do you speak any oh. German? Oh, no. But my grandfather is German and Irish. So I'm like, mm. I want to study, but I haven't. <laughs> but he has, he, sorry, I keep asking all these questions, but oh, like, no he worries. has a German German accent. No, not at all. He's New York, so he has that New York accent, like okay. Long yeah. Island. Yeah, I did a 24. 
when Andrew was like, oh, so your dad's white. And I'm like, that's pretty nebulous. I'd like a little more information there. <laughs> it's like, we'll it's like it. when Japanese people say, oh, you're American. I'm like, American in one context. Like, <laughs> I, I have to always say, like, Europa ke America jin, like, European American to kind of remind people, like, he's, he's a white American or European yeah, American. Yeah, there's- Mike, this is a problem with the South where I'm from. <laughs> I, I, admit, I admit it's a problem, but yeah. I, I noticed this in movies and podcasts, people from New York, they're mm-hmm. like, this guy's Italian and Polish and blah, blah, blah. Like people from yeah. the South do not talk about that stuff. Like you're white or black. No one talks about like I'm English or Irish or whatever. Yeah. It's not may, a, not a topic the, of conversation. Yeah. Cause in New York, I feel like because there's that immigrant culture of like European yeah. culture so, and there's com- pods and communities. So I feel like, yeah, it's really interesting how like you would maybe go to Hawaii. They may be more specific about your lineage or ethnicity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, in LA is not as much like there's a discussion, but not that prominent, like categorization of each ethnicity or um, yeah. yeah, race or ethnicity. Yeah. As okay. soon as I hear white, I'm like, okay, I need more information. That doesn't what <laughs> flavor. What, what flavor, flavor of white? white? Like the McFlurry. <laughs> kind. <laughs> but, my, yeah, the McFlurry. My, <laughs> but my grandmother is originally from Sicily or her family. So she's the second, she was the second generation Italian American. And my grandfather okay. was German and Irish. So we have kind of like that immigrant background from mm-hmm. our European side, as well as our Japanese side. My mom uh, came to the U.S. Mm-hmm. in her 40s. She was in Boston for a little bit, but okay. she was yeah. she was around four, 45 or so when she was like, I want to move to a different country. So I've been very lucky to have a father who got his PhD at age 50 or so. <laughs> uh-huh. And uh-huh. my mom was like, let me challenge a new country. So it's always kind of motivated me to try different career paths. And Japan Foundation at the time came at a right place where I wanted to work somewhere that was like, mm-hmm. I get to connect with Japan, but also connect with my job. Japanese mother in terms of teaching and connect with Japanese teachers. So I was very lucky that I came at the right time. Family of challengers, man. I did the 23 and me and like (laughs) an ancestry.com and fucking like no recent immigrants. Fucking everybody came over (laughs) in the late 1600s. Like, so like, I mean, everybody's other than, you know, indigenous population, like there's no, I mean, we're, yeah, we've been here for a long time. Like, <laughs> anyway. So, Megan, how did you get started with Japan Foundation? Uh, so, I went on JET promptly following graduation. Oh, JET um, represent? Yeah. So, I was there in uh, Hofushi in Yamaguchi Prefecture mm. for three years. And I was the last cohort to go before the pandemic hit. Um, oh. We're also the last beneficiaries of that tax policy. Wow. wow. That's pretty recent, though. Hey. Nice. Yeah. So I came back um, July 2022 mm. um, and was initially initially found a job down in San Diego um, at a startup. And I knew that I wanted to go back and work and live in Japan at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, so initially I was like, okay, well, I can do the HR stuff. Um but I was really missing um, using Japanese in my daily life. Mm. Um, so I happened to see this job opening on the Jet um, Alumni Southern California email newsletter that comes out monthly. Yeah, and I cool. went, well, what the hey? <laughs> I want business <laughs> Japanese. I don't know if my Japanese is good enough for that because... Mm. Um, you know, Son Kegel kicks my butt. <laughs> I don't know yeah, about anybody yeah. else. <laughs> yeah. um, but I applied, I interviewed, and they were like, yeah, no, please come on. So I initially started as the um, grant reviewer for two of the four grants that we offer. Mm-hmm. Um, the two that I am still in charge of, but transitioning out of, are the Japanese Language Learners Event Grant. Okay. And the teaching materials purchasing grant. Okay, the teaching purchasing materials grant seems pretty straightforward. Yeah. <laughs> what about the <laughs> other one though? The event uh, learners event uh, grant. So basically, um, as long as it's a, an what they call an open event, so it's not just one school. Mm-hmm. So if a college wanted to have a speech contest, for example, that's a really easy mm-hmm. example. Um, we get a lot of people who 
want to do speech contests. Mm -hmm. um, if they want to have a speech contest, but they can they only offer it to students in their school, mm -hmm. can't do that. It has to be open to two or more schools. Okay. Um, so we, you know, we see speech contests, we see bunkasai, mm -hmm. um, all sorts of different really cool events um, that people come up with. Are you um, at liberty to discuss how sizable these grants are? Yeah, that's public knowledge. On uh, okay. the maximum amount for both of them is a thousand dollars. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Other the other two event or sorry not event the other two grants that we offer um, are at larger amounts. Okay. Um, but uh, maximum amount is a thousand dollars. Doesn't mean you always get a thousand dollars, but yeah. <laughs> um, the maximum amount that we can potentially give is a thousand. Right. Um, so as long as it has some connection to Japanese language, mm -hmm. um, be it you're doing skits in Japanese, um, you're discussing nuances of different words that come up a lot in business Japanese, what have you, as long as there's that language component yeah, uh, and it's a event that's open to multiple schools, organizations, the mm -hmm. community, um, yeah. you can apply. That's cool. Potentially get it. All right. Now you said you work with two of the four grants. Correct. The other two. Can you tell us a little bit about those, please? The other two grants that we offer are the salary assistance grant, mm -hmm. which I think that's I could use some salary pretty. assistance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't imagine I'm eligible. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> um, but salary assistance grant for Japanese teachers. Um, mm. So if a that's if great. No teacher makes is... enough money. So give it yeah. to them, please. For the love yeah, of God, it's... please give them money. Yeah. Yeah, um, they're, yeah. They're eligible. So there, there are some caveats, and I'm not nearly as familiar with those mm -hmm. um, as the grants that I oversee. But um, I, and is is there yeah. a a set number of those that teachers, Japanese less, teachers might get? Um, it's less numbers and more how big is our budget? Mm -hmm. um, because like this year, our budget has not been particularly large, so the number of grants that we're mm -hmm. able to support yeah. is much lower than it has been in previous years um no idea what the budget is going to look like next year which is kind um, of unfortunate because i feel like you know in looking back at my time in 2001 and then you going back to japan in 2005 2007 the number of people and programs i feel available for japanese language study has definitely increased in that 20 year time period yeah so yeah yeah so it's, I mean, a couple years ago, we had a fairly large budget. Um, we'll see what happens going forward. Um, but so yeah, our salary assistance grant for Japanese teachers, um, that can be for a current program or a new program. So if someone's looking to start a program, mm -hmm. um, they can still apply for that as well. Um, cool. And then there is the project grant which mm -hmm. is frequently confused with the event grant. Um, the project mm -hmm. grant is directed towards teachers, actually. So it's really like any kind of workshop, webinar, seminar, any kind of thing where um, it's like professional development, essentially. Okay, yeah, um, I was going to ask, is this meant to be student-focused or if this is meant no, for the enrichment no. of the teachers? This yeah. is very much meant for the enrichment of the teachers. That's and that cool. one, unlike all the other ones, does have a rolling deadline, so that's... Mm -hmm. like, think it's two months out from when your event happens mm -hmm. um but all of this is online on our yeah. website so yeah feel free to check out jfla <laughs> um, not to be confused with japan foundation new york we do have two japan foundations um in america wait a second i did not realize that yeah yeah no so we um there are 26 japan foundations in the world whoa um america is the only country that has two wow um there's japan foundation los angeles um and then there's japan foundation new york um, New wow. York is focused more on the cultural side of things and specifically takes all the states um, east of the Rockies mm. for cultural events and things like that. Um, okay. Whereas we cover cultural events west of the Rockies. However, Japan Foundation LA covers um, Japan language grants for the entirety of the US and assorted territories. Okay. So what if you're in the Rockies themselves? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's okay i don't I think there's any programs directly in the mountain range sure right. <laughs> um, i know like colorado falls on they, they do have like i think somewhere there's a, a map 
Yeah. So they've divided it out pretty clearly. And, um, I think Colorado <laughs> comes to us. But oh, really? My, okay. My geography of America is significantly poorer. I can do the East Coast. <laughs> Live in a lot of states there. It's significantly easier. Yeah. Speaking of, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, language background and history and all? Yeah. So, um, like Lena, I am also Hafe. Um, okay. My father is Japanese and my mother is Irish, like fourth generation Irish. That flavor of white. Okay, good. <laughs> um, I'm glad also, we covered it. <laughs> before, before grandma comes after me, there's some French Canadian mixed in there somewhere, and I don't remember the exact percentages. Oh, right. but grandma is yeah. very insistent on the French Canadian, so <laughs> for grandma. <laughs> we'll we'll make sure that. she gets a hold of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> bookmark this um, for her. So, uh, yeah, no, I moved a lot growing up. Mm -hmm. um, I was born in North Carolina. Hmm. Um, nice. As evidenced by the fact that I cannot say that state without drawing the You Carolina. did have a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Apparently, if you get me mad enough, I'll still kick into the North Carolinian accent. So. Hmm. How, how were you there until you were like six, seven or something? Like, why do you have Well, so I was born there. Then we moved when I was two to Missouri. Mm. Okay. Then we moved back for another couple of years. And then halfway through kindergarten, we moved up to Maryland. That's still southernish. Yeah, right. We moved up it to is. Upstate New York, um, just outside of Rochester. Uh -huh. We were there for 10 years. And then I graduated high school and went out to UCSD while my parents moved down to Pennsylvania. Wow. Yeah, and then I moved a couple more times. Place. In. Yeah. <laughs> and to Japan. Yeah. And then I went off to Japan. So <laughs> So what about languages in the home? Uh, languages in the home is mostly English. Um, mm -hmm. I did, like my dad would drill me and my younger brother on pronunciation. Mm -hmm. So it would be a lot of the out of the blue, okay, repeat after me. Uh, and he taught me how to like count to 10, um, how to ask where the bathroom is, but not how to understand the directions. Um, I feel like that needed a little bit more to the lesson, but yeah. you know, I made it out. Okay. It's all good. Yeah. Um, and then a lot of insults, <laughs> makes sense. but, uh, one of the things my dad particularly focused on was the cultural aspect. Mm -hmm. So like he would. My, my dad and his family came over to the States in the early 70s, mm -hmm. um, like with a lot of Japanese businessmen and their families um, who came over and then mm -hmm. stayed. And while a number of them went back, my family didn't. Um, so we have a lot of old manga. Like we have a lot <laughs> of nice, Tezuka, nice. Ishinomori Shotaro, Mizuki Shigeru. Like we have a whole bunch. Nice. So as bedtime stories when I was young, <laughs> um, I got to be regaled with the adventures of um, Tetsuo Anatom, Burak Jack, mm. Cyborg 009, um, you know, all sorts of Wonder 3, all sorts of hey, different that's awesome. That's cool. That's um, awesome. Things. So it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And then, you know, when I went to Japan on jet, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the older um, male teachers in particular were super excited about the Shin Urutrama <laughs> movie coming out. And I was like, oh my God, there's a Shin Urutrama movie coming out. And they're like, why do you <laughs> care? <laughs> yeah. I'm um, like, because I watched it growing up. And I'm like, wait, how old are you again? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, that was another mandatory viewing that was a lot of fun. So I watched Kikaida, I watched Urutraman, Uru mm. um, Urutra 7, um, Ultra Q as well, um, which is really wild. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that was, in my house, it was less focused on the language component and a lot more on the cultural component although yeah. there was the mandatory when you when and if you go to college you will take at least one year's worth of japanese language mm. right so i took that and went all right well what if i start sooner because <laughs> i thought it was the coolest thing that my dad could translate manga on the fly like he was not reading these, <laughs> yeah. to, these to me yeah. in japanese he was literally like oh yeah just going through it i was wondering um, about that that's yeah, very cool yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so not all the like names got translated necessarily, especially for, you know, some of the reoccurring cast in like Tezuka works. Mm -hmm. um, 
like autonomous sensei is autonomous sensei, like yeah or hakase uh, right. you know that's that's um, an important decision that a, a translator has to make and uh, yeah that's, yeah that's that's yeah. where we are currently it feels like is the uh, the norm <laughs> exactly <laughs> leave a so name I as a name was, I thought that was the coolest thing since sliced bread. Um, and that was my personal goals. Like one day I want to be able to do that. Um, mm, so that's cool. About, that is cool. <laughs> thank you. Around about <laughs> uh, middle school, I went, all right, well, I'm bored. I've got these study halls. Let's learn hiragana and katakana. Mm. And so I did that. And then in high school, I was very fortunate that my high school was actually really close to a bunch of different colleges. Mm-hmm. So I and my family was able to support me going to initially the community college to mm-hmm. take Japanese. And then trans, uh, my senior year of high school, I went to a larger college that offered second years Japanese. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then I went on to UCSD and proceeded to major in Japanese. So. Oh, OK. That's nice. cool. And you're yeah. studying for N1. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. It's probably not happening this year, but definitely next year. Okay. (laughs) Purely because this year has been absolutely crazy. uh, And I would like to take a break. (laughs) 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 I moved countries. I was, I, you know, like literally I came back from Japan. I had a week at Mm. my parents' house where I had to get all of these things done. um, You know, make sure that the house was set up for me and my roommates, that there was a house to move into, make sure that the car was ready for me to pick up. Mm-hmm. I gave myself a week to get all of those things done, go out to San Diego, mm. um, acquire and set up the house, the car, all of that fun things, change my life, driver's license because my driver's license had expired, yeah. <laughs> um, and then started work. Mm. And then, you know, three, four months later, changed my position and recall that my initial job when I got back to the States was in San Diego. Um, so I was driving <laughs> up three days mm. a week to come into the office. Oh man. Um, yeah. <laughs> for this is, four, this is where remote work is nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, those days where I got to remote work were really nice. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So I was like, okay, you know what? I will, in fact, be nice to myself and not try to add the chip. Yeah, it's it's a trap. <laughs> yeah. You, like, yeah. Did you go for it too, Lena, in the JLPT? Oh yeah, I passed the Niku, this uh, level two in mm-hmm. high school. Then I got like a pretty high score on that one. Then I was like, let me do level one because my brother and me were competitive. So uh-huh. when he found out I was doing level two, he was like, no, I'm not taking level two. I'm gonna be level one. <laughs> then yeah, then I was like falling asleep in most of like the aside of the listening and all that. I was just like I'm done. But yeah, I passed the first one. It was before they switched to N one to N five mm-hmm. because it used to be IQ yeah. to YQ through yeah. Yonkyu, but yes, because yes. the level between the IQ and YQ was quite big they decided to make it five levels. So I took yeah. it before. But the good thing about JLPT is um it's pretty much lifelong. So like I was studying, I was looking at the Korean, like um, mm-hmm. topic, uh, was it topic? But they were like, it says that you have to like, you know, retake Refresh it. Refresh your every, credentials. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be like every two years, two, three years. You oh, have wow. To okay. It. So it's much more frequent and there's less levels, like separation. It's more like new mon, shokyu, then I think it's chukyu, jokyu. So I realized like, while well, having JLPT is like a lifelong kind of like, yeah a proof that you've studied and acquired so far so i'm like i recommend it for anyone or some people are just like they want like a goal post i'm like oh great Mm -hmm. jlpt is like a perfect way to kind of put if you especially if you're self-studying you're kind of like where do i start where do i and everyone has a different way of learning Mm -hmm. like some people are more audio some people are more visual some people are more kind of like writing and reading is like their strength but when it comes to speaking or processing mm-hmm. it may be a different so they may skill um they may score really well on the jlpt so i'm always like yeah. encouraging people different language learners just try it see what you think and then if you get more than the n2 you can actually use that in like your resume and you can actually mm-hmm. tell japanese employers that you're able to work in a business setting and I, when i used to work at japan foundation sometimes like high school teachers will be like can you come to our school to talk so um, fortunately, because it was COVID, um, we were able to kind of do virtual 
kind of like uh-huh. introduction. So what I did was I created slides and a lot of students were asking me about JLPT and mm-hmm. what they wanted to do. So I realized like that's a huge interest and it's great that Japan Foundation is kind of like a big part along with the American T- Teachers yeah. Association, a Japanese, they work together. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. American Association. Um, yeah, American Association. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> no worries. I just had to stare at that acronym. Yeah, a lot the AATJ and Japan Foundation works really um, like strongly. So it's great that like the Japanese language community has a strong like support mm-hmm. and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. I was, I was actually really looking forward to finally taking it uh, this year after many oh. years. I last took it in 2019. And, oh, nice. uh, and then they canceled it for my area. Yeah, the they canceled hit, it. Yeah, and it never came back. I thought, oh, oh it's gonna, it's gonna come back this year. It'll be fine. We, we got it. And then it showed up, and I was like, no, my nearest place is like a four-hour drive or so. Oh my god, that's far. So the problem Dude. is, yeah, the time of year. Uh, it, there could be snow and I'd have to book a hotel room. So I opted out. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I'm taking a plane to take mine this year. LA sold out for N1. So I'm going to oh, Seattle. What? Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. I, dude, I'm, I'm serious, bro. I'm serious about this <laughs> test, man. So like I, that sucks. Uh, oh. but a plane flight, a flight to Seattle from LA is like $150. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, yes, it's 150 extra bucks, but whatever and i have a friend that lives in tacoma mm-hmm. and so i'm, I'm gonna stay there for <laughs> stay there for free he's a college buddy we're buds yeah. so it's like so like it's it's like an extra 150 bucks and then a couple of times we're gonna eat out while we're while i'm there like yeah. so it's like fuck it let's do it <laughs> if, if if it was offered twice a year then i wouldn't have done it but if, since it's once yeah. a year yeah yeah it's japan like, only J- offers it twice a year yeah japan yeah. everywhere else is like nah once a year Make sure yeah. your timing is correct. Like I think so- Hawaii used to have twice a year, maybe, oh, really? but I think, but that was the only state, I think. Mm, maybe okay. you guys can pull some strings over at the Japan Foundation. That's what this is all about. It's, it's, I mean, I the think the chances that's... of snow messing up my travel uh, are much less in the summer. <laughs> if they do yeah, that. yeah, for sure, yeah, man. No, I, I that is that. true. That's a good point. Okay. And yeah, I'm hoping that even like AP Japanese, like high school Japanese, um, mm-hmm. there was a struggle if we're moving to like remote virtual testing. So mm-hmm. it's like, it would be nice if it's eventually like available online for people to take rather than in person and having to be yeah. there. Because yeah. yeah, sometimes technology gets updated. So it'll be good to kind of touch base and see, okay, what can we do to make this more accessible for different yeah. students? Because some students um, like for high school, if, if they're not in that school, they can't take the exam. So it's kind of like they've been studying mm-hmm. it, but they're like, how are we supposed to get the credits to apply to their college? So it would be nice if there's more ac- yeah, accessibility in that aspect. Yeah, that, I used to do TOEFL test preparation. I, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a teacher. I do okay. ESL. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, when I was doing the TOEFL prep, there were a lot of students that came to me because they had they started to do the cutoff from the paper-based and computer-based and going internet-based which okay. incorporated speaking at that time. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people were very nervous about the change there. But that was that would have been about 2007. Okay. So the the fact of being here in 2023 and being like please for for the love of everything just give us an internet based test because I can't travel the one time of year and it's going to cost $100 now for the test the, the price went up and then oh, did it? Oh, yeah. it was 60 something 65 yeah. but it went up to 100 the past oh, wow. two or three oh, wow. years so yeah, yeah it's more expensive mm-hmm. and there's the travel yeah. and the weather could <laughs> put a damper on yeah. things definitely so it would be really nice to see have you guys heard anything about any push for a <laughs> computer-based so, internet <laughs> that is outside of my my wheelhouse that's one of my co-workers yeah. um, arranges everything Right. Um, yep. So we'll go, just, just tell I the coworker to get it set up. That's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> beyond the, you know, block the date. Um, mm-hmm. Sangetsu, what are you doing? <laughs> Sangetsu wants cat. to say hi. <laughs> no, she only wants her tail to be available. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I haven't heard anything from them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been mostly the, you know, we, we help proctor yeah. um, the LA one. 
Yeah. So yeah. it's been more of the, all right, make sure that you're free mm -hmm. on the third. Yep. Um, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah. No talk about day. big changes to the test structure. No. Yeah. Nothing, nothing like that. Okay. I mean, no. Well, yeah. hopefully. I will say if anyone's on Jet, <laughs> um, Jet did implement, I think they're doing it again, but at least mm. when I was there, um, if you took N3 through one and you passed, they would refund your um, oh nice test fee. That's oh. nice. That's very nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't know that's that. Cool. That's a pretty cool. Hang on to your your payment slip at whatever <laughs> conveni you play paid at. I'm assuming people are paying at convenies. Otherwise, I don't. Know. I guess you can still pay on card, whatever. Yeah, um, but yeah, no. Hang on to that slip. Hang on to all your thing. Print out the form and submit that, and you can get your. I mean, when I took it in Japan, it was like sixty five bucks. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Back in the day. So Would you funny. say that the the JLPT is the main? No, it's not. I mean, what's the what's the main function of Japan Foundation? What's so the, what does it mainly do? It's essentially um, there's community outreach, but ultimately it is trying to um, act as a bridge between the U.S. and Japan in terms of culture, language, arts performances, what have you. Um, mm. So it's really kind of bringing Japan to America, in a sense. Gotcha. In an authentic um, sense. Yeah, in an authentic sense. As old-fashioned yeah. as that sounds. It feels like no, that's good, that though. Out of like the 80s let's just clarify. But, let's, yeah. That's bringing, bringing it to America west of the Rockies uh, with one group, <laughs> and then bringing it to America east of the Rockies with another group. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for, for culture. For culture. For language, that's all yeah. L.A. And then the JLPT is just another thing. Another aspect. Yeah, aspect of yeah, Japan Foundation. Hmm. Did so they you know, make it up or was the Japanese government make it up and then the, the Japan Foundation attached themselves to it later on? Do you know the history behind all this? I'm not sure. I can take a stab, but Lena, do you happen to know? I'm not entirely sure either, but with Japan Foundation, the headquarters, they do have like teacher training and all that kind of stuff too. So I wonder if it's like really closely connected to uh, like actually making exams and such. Like that will be something I would like to research as well on my end. Uh, like if the teacher, because they do teacher trainings and all that kind of stuff in Japan, if they implement what they um, yeah do in Japan foundation at the actual yeah. exams or not but yeah i'm not too familiar with but most likely maybe a very japanese government yeah i know i was if under you the impression the test, oops, sorry. I, I was gonna say i was under the impression it was the ministry of education yeah no, i was gonna likely, say yeah. for japan if you take the test in japan mm -hmm. um the site is promoted through um next so ministry of education technology yeah and other things that eventually end in X question mark. <laughs> I remember the entire thing at one point, but yeah, but that point yeah, is not now. Definitely. It's like how, you know, Jet is very connected to the Japanese government, the Ministry of Education. So, mm -hmm. and then we, we like, I remember when I was in Japan Foundation, they would ask us to interview or help out with the processings in that, in that aspect. So I was like, realizing, yeah, we work really closely. Mm -hmm. with the consulate as well in that aspect okay as well. so the ministry probably created the test initially and then japan foundation i'm just guessing here were the ones that helped bring the test to america Out, yeah we're more than outside of I japan know, yeah. yeah outside of japan yeah. yeah i know the we just celebrated the 40th anniversary of japan foundation los angeles hmm. um so i don't know how long the test has been available in America slash how old the test itself is, mm -hmm. okay. but yeah, no, I I would agree. It probably something along the lines of government created it. Is the Japan United Kingdom Japan Foundation JFUK? Ah. Dot com dot org. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, I am I am twelve years old. <laughs> <laughs> I am very immature. That <laughs> please tell uh, me it's J <laughs> That is not something I know off the top of my head. That's out of her jurisdiction. Um, I can yes, tell you Toronto yes. is JF that's, Toronto. That's yeah. very far uh, east of the Rockies. J font. <laughs> <laughs> J font dot org. Okay. 
We gotta look that up later, but I'm not sure. sure. <laughs> okay. London. Yeah, because you said 26 countries, so we're talking, yeah. I assume, a lot in Europe. Thailand and shit, or like, like yeah, where? Thailand. I guess I can look it up, but yeah, yeah. Um, one in Mexico. Nice. Um, Toronto, um, so Canada. They're doing okay. really cool things. They invited the creator of Vinland Saga to uh, oh, oh, uh, cool, an author's event that they were having for the city. So yeah, yeah. so I saw there was a grant to uh, bring people from Japan to the events, mm -hmm. and yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's a nice idea. And pay to yeah. get some folks flying over and promote their their arts yeah but yeah i i don't know that i've seen much in the way of uh video game stuff uh, promoted through japan foundation though yeah i've not seen anything in that regards either um we are in your we time, have did done you see any more Lena? yeah i mean i've only started last uh, december so i've not right. i've not been here and any in long. your time lena that you saw remember seeing video games promoted not really. Sometimes there's always that like anime expo and how connected mm -hmm. Japan Foundation is because it's like in LA it happens or like with literature, not sure about video games, but literature, Japan Foundation in New York mm -hmm. often had like uh, online like um, interviews or kind of like we would um, yeah con work with Japan Foundation New York in that regards, mm -hmm. like the literature related events, but not really in terms of yeah video games or like mm -hmm. online. But yeah, a lot of the, the staffs are really big fans of yeah, anime and manga. So there, that was a very common topic discussed mm -hmm. in our office, for sure. Yeah. And we have done um, collaborative events with other local museums and organizations. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. did one for Akira mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. I don't remember, the automotive museum that's like down the street from us. Or LACMA but... or? No, it's not LACMA. There's a some big automotive. Oh, Peterson, Peterson Auto. Yeah, Club. yeah, yeah. That, that and one. oh, yeah, which reminds yeah. me a good point about that. We have we um, like our Japan Foundation kind of um, helped with the Nara Yoshitomo Muse um, exhibit at LACMA. Mm -hmm. So a couple of art exhibits such as yeah the Ghibli, like when mm -hmm. the Academy of um, Museum of Arts they had their exhibition for Ghibli. Japan Foundation kind of like um, helped. So sponsor it so it may not be mm -hmm. video game but they have sponsored or they have worked with yeah like um in terms of like art museum and all that kind of stuff as well so I like think... I, if i know like the fine art stuff is probably the main thing and i can understand yeah. why that's like the main thing you want to do but if you have done anime stuff i don't i think it would not be too much of a huge jump if some video game stuff was added because yeah. like my yeah. for example like mike and i you know, yes, it was part anime, uh, but video games, especially in the 90s, were, like, very, like, uh, you know, Japan-centric. Mm -hmm. And that's what we grew up on. It, yeah. uh, you know, this was a time when there wasn't any Xbox and there was no Atari. So, like... <laughs> Atari our, had just uh, crashed and burned. <laughs> Atari, Atari crashed and burned. So, like, we're growing up in the 90s with just, just Nintendo, just yep. Sega, and just Sony, which came later in the game. And, like... So like every video game like we elder millennials were playing were all like Japanese consoles, all yeah. of them. So like yeah, Game Boy, it. et cetera. So like yeah, there's a whole generation of us that like video games occupy kind of the same level of Japan interest or mm -hmm. like sparked Japan interest uh, as much as anime did. Yeah, I have so, a question. Can I ask you guys like, yeah. that's okay for me there. So I know that I like, with the surge of K-pop, and I feel like because um, mm -hmm. like other Korean entertainment has been very very visible, and I feel mm -hmm. like Japan had that opportunity to kind of grasp and when anime oh, yeah. and like yeah, video games were huge. I feel like they kind of lost that opportunity. That's kind of like my perception about it because they're so insular. Or they were able to kind of mm. like um, within I their 100 country. One hundred percent agree. Yeah, it's like the, it's a very domestic market. So like even CD sales were. CD cells are still pretty strong in Japan, and, and streaming mm -hmm. is a very recent, um, so, um, recent issue. So I wonder, yeah, with video games, like I always feel like even with Japanese government when they were doing the cool Japan, they were focused on the anime and manga <laughs> rather You're than my like, mind. <laughs> video games. I feel like maybe because of the localization, even like music and other factors, make mm -hmm. it really like it's really like core. There's a core group of yeah, like. I was a big mm -hmm. fan of Japanese video games, but there wasn't like, in, I feel like, yeah, 
anime and manga is considered more than mass consumerism and just like easy, like, oh, mm-hmm. we can spread it. But Japan kind of like lost the opportunity to kind of be like, oh, there's more than just manga, anime. Even now, I feel like with events, I'm like, there's more to Japan than these like five things. But I feel like yeah, there yeah, hasn't yeah. been a push from Japanese government to promote. Outside of the kind of kawaii or kind of like soft culture, they might still yeah. very. They might like, especially the older people, people older than us, especially like look down on video games. So like they, like maybe yeah. like anime and manga have sort of made their, especially thanks to Ghibli, like have like they they're maybe seen as more elevated art forms. But they're ha- like cute. There's no you know? Nintendo mm-hmm. might be the only spot where it really feels like this is like. An art form, a video, an art, a Japanese art form. You know, it's kind of representing Japan in, in a good light. Like yeah. Nintendo with with Mario and Zelda and all that. Like they they might, like especially Breath of the Wild. It feels very Ghibli mm-hmm. already. Yeah, you know? definitely. So, like Nino but Kuni I, was I, Ghibli inspired. Like the creators exactly. of Ghibli were working on Nino Kuni. But definitely, I feel like yeah, like with like Final Fantasy, Fantasy Star Online. I love those games, but it's mm-hmm. very like. Yeah, I love Yakuza too. So it's like the very strong <laughs> like storyline, yeah. many many hours of like spending, but it's not easy access for people that are mm-hmm. just a casual. I I would want to see the numbers because I know K-pop is bigger than ever. It's big. Mm-hmm. It's way bigger than J-pop, probably ten times bigger at this point. But mm-hmm. like the amount of money Nintendo was making, yeah, and mm-hmm. Mario made. All kinds of money in the box office this year too. Oh yeah, they there's, did. There's there's no well. there's there's no Korean um, you know, K-pop land like there is Mario Land in <laughs> L.A. right now. You know what I mean? So like, Japan still is very much killing it. I think. Yeah. I mean, they, they're, they're there's some miss op- there's some miss opportunities with music and with with live action like with like K drama is also killing it. Korea's sort of stepping in to where Japan isn't. Like Japan is like there's a cr- crunchy roll. There's no Korean. There's har- probably hardly any Korean animation on there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like Japan's still it killing it with to Korea. <laughs> yeah, Japan's still killing it with animation. Or and they video have games. animators from Korea and Vietnam to draw yeah. for them. They outsource their <laughs> yes, animators. Yes. True, but but written written and, and initially designed at least yeah, probably definitely. in Japan for the right. most part. So I think it's still there. Korea's definitely st- stepping up the game quite a bit, but. I think it's still kind of compartmentalized. Yeah. You know, it depends yeah. on what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I would say that Japan's probably, I don't know if it's more of a domestic reason, but with all of the like, there have been so many reboots. And I know this is mm-hmm. true the world over, but um, I mean, they did a fairly decent, okay, I'm biased. I like FMA, <laughs> but like, I think they did a really pretty good job with, the live action FMA reboot. Mm-hmm. This is Full Metal um, Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I mean, the, the wigs were kind of interesting in a couple cases. Um, but like <laughs> Al's armor, the CGI they did for all of the alchemy that Ed's spamming left, right, and center, mm-hmm. like that was that was really good. And like mm-hmm. the Rudoni Kenshi movies, I mean, they've been coming out for a couple years now. I've heard but- those are good. Those are those are very yeah, good. Those are really good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I'm also biased. I, I did get my friend who had no faith in any live action remakes <laughs> to watch the Rudoni Kenshi movies. And she was like, okay, actually these were good. So <laughs> I'm not saying this just because I'm a metal fan either, but I've heard the Detroit Metal City or whatever, like anime live action anime was actually good live oh, action i, I love the live action for detroit it, it was good i i, I need yeah, to see one it. of my favorite movies i would say like in terms of really like, live action yeah and oh yeah and then if we're talking about live action like one piece right now with netflix and the whole yeah. popularity like surge again with japanese mm-hmm. media but it's so interesting they always talk about zoro the guy he's a japanese actor makenyu he's not in a lot of the interviews so they like they make a joke like oh Zoro's asleep somewhere but it's like it's interesting <laughs> how Japanese management is probably very restrictive on uh-huh. his appearances so it's really interesting to see how are Japanese like actors or like contents mm-hmm. like if the management's being very strict with them how are they gonna yeah. be accessible and it's kind of like the so, yeah these yeah. actors are going to are in a lot of interviews and making a really great impression and then the writer was like i love one piece i really want to make sure it does well and then the writer approved of the main cast mm-hmm. so i feel like 
this is a great opportunity, but I'm, I'm like, again, it's like that opportunity is missed. I think, yeah, I'm totally with you on that. Like, I remember the big push with soft power, cool Japan. And I yeah. was like, where are my video games? Where are all these video yeah. games? And something that relates directly to what you were just saying is um, the, you were mentioning the Yakuza series before. Uh, mm-hmm. It's called Judgment. Uh, for yeah, I love Judgment. Lost oh, it's so good. So, yeah. yeah, Takuya Kimura was yes. it? Yes, the, the star. Yeah. Kimutaka, Kimutaku. Kimutaku. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like he, the Brad Pitt of Japan in some sense, right? He's yeah. Like, he's the lead, yeah. right? And he's very yeah. good in it. It's very, it's, it's an awesome game. But they, the management agency for him refused to allow a PC version of the game mm-hmm. because yeah. they were saying, oh, they, they're afraid of what's going to happen with his likeness, that it's not going to be in their control. That's because Mods. they don't understand that you can also mod console games too. But, yeah it's, you know and it's like yeah just, definitely hmm, they really could have had something being pushed big here but now it's kind of like well they don't want him now to continue the series because they need somebody who can promote it freely and say like okay we want to release this game on the pc mm-hmm. that's that's a you know that's another hundred thousand sales two hundred thousand sales right there that we can't get yeah and his agency well right now they're going for a lot of issues with um it, Issues. Yeah, they have, yeah, yeah. Well, well, like there's been a, um yeah. like um a lot of backlash, and they're um I think they're closing down the company or they're um adjusting. It's a sex. I mean, it's a yeah, it's a sex, years yeah. long sex yeah, abuse sex scandal. Yeah. Like, d- d- shut it down. Go for it. Yeah, you definitely. Know? So they're <laughs> working on shutting it out. At first, they were like, "No, we're not going to shut it down," but like backlash has been. So finally, they were like, "Okay, no. we need to shut it down." But it was interesting that agency refused to even have pictures or their idols on like mm-hmm. and um media and it was just like the lack like even on youtube or anything even their music is like non-accessible mm-hmm. and i was just like why are they doing this why are they self sabotaging their actual market <laughs> yeah. when they could actually make a profit or like accessibility so like, yeah definitely right. They're running counter to the principles of the Japan Foundation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you, both of you, Lena and Mike, you both agree mm-hmm. that Japan has dropped the ball in the culture, in the soft power game. Yeah. When it comes to video and games, Korea's, absolutely. And Korea's running it. Yeah, in terms of video games, that's no, not No, okay. Korea's not running it in terms of video games. But yeah. Korea, video game, yeah. they dropped the ball in music too, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, yeah, like, there's a lot of good... Japanese pop music. There's no reason yeah. it couldn't have been sent abroad, especially with anime making way and you know theme songs and everything getting popular. Well, I mean, they they finally stopped, you know, creating American only. <laughs> the virgins, yeah, definitely. yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Some of those are a bop, and yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, I really enjoyed watching Yu Gi Oh. I I actually mm-hmm. watched Yu Gi Oh over Pokemon. So yeah. uh, there we go. But like Yu Gi Oh is the yeah. better card game too. <laughs> No doubt. Um, but uh, yeah, no. I mean, now that they're keeping the songs, or mm-hmm. even like the God, if you listen to like their first um, case closed Meitante Quanon <sighs> opening, they translated that into English. Oh, I never, I never uh, heard. And it's it. it's wild. It's no. wild. Um, <laughs> sounds a lot better in Japanese. No offense to the people who sing it in English. I'm, I'm sorry, the the lyrics just sound better in Japanese. Um, yeah. I agree. But like now we're seeing all of these. I mean, they're all over TikTok. They're all mm-hmm. over social media. Like Idol from Yoasobi. Yeah, Yoasobi is um, doing well. Yeah. Like, yeah. All of but they, it's, it's they really could have had this. Like. They really could have had this through the past 20 years. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I feel like the blueprint for, for incredible success was set with Kingdom Hearts, the first one. When, oh yeah, uh, simple and clean. Utarashikari. Or Hikari, yeah. Utarashikari. Right? Yeah. The song was Hikari, right? In Japanese. Yeah. And like yeah. it just it was so good in both languages because she's I also agree. very good in both languages. Yeah. She's you know? one of the right. stars that like yeah, she could have I'm just always like ah. it's yeah. like a missed opportunity, like with her. She has a lot of great English songs, but mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, and then she had the album that was, I think, America Only, uh, Exodus or yeah. something, and it yeah, was, it was, it was like, no, that's fine. She's she works just fine working in both languages, and it's great. Mm-hmm. Like, let her do her thing, you know. <laughs> 
But yeah. I mean, I think also like the deal with K-pop now is K-pop is <sighs> Japanese people talk about this a lot. I feel like anyway, J-pop is kawaii and K-pop is sexy. It's the whole cute, <laughs> sexy dichotomy. Like, mm-hmm. and I feel like sexy sells more inter- internationally than cute does. Although Japan did make a fucking shitload of inroads with kawaii culture. So what can, up, you Hello blame, Kitty? can you blame, can you blame them really? You know, but I think with music, it, it like the buck stops there maybe a little bit like J-pop, just a little bit too cute at mm-hmm. times. And K-pop has definitely got like a little bit more sex going on. Or it's kind of like with that whole idol culture and, you you know, people bought CDs to actually meet their favorite idol or they were kind of like this whole, <laughs> there's a more yeah. concept of like growth. They kind of like see, like seeing their idols grow and kind of more like mm-hmm. a, kind of like a um, parasocial relationship with their idol. So it's yeah. like the music is kind of like in conjunction to that. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, I feel like with Japan, because they are more so like insular and in-house, they're able to make music that's more catered to what's mm-hmm. domestically appropriate. Well, yeah, Korea, yeah. because their economy is so much smaller than Japan too, they kind of have to go to Japan. They have to go to the US. They have to go to other languages, mm-hmm. uh, countries and learn their languages to promote their product. Yeah, well, Japan doesn't yeah. have that kind of like necessity. And, yeah, like, yeah. and it's like the UX, like apps too, I feel like it's very mm-hmm. it's like very like easy to use in a japanese context or setting but if they were to produce it in the u.s or other countries it may not be as accessible so it's like a combination or yeah. f- fill us that one as well yeah i've always found japanese user experiences to be a little uh cluttered or overwhelming for my yeah. american sensibilities yeah know? it's like there's there's just too much content rather than mm-hmm. like the smooth transition of it so like yeah. i've been able to like recently speak speak with people who has created apps in japan so i'm kind of they're kind of like launching in u.s i'm kind of curious to see what the mm-hmm. user experience is like like how are they going to bring the japanese aspect to the user experience and mm-hmm. continue the service here as well. People make fun of um, Japanese MMORPGs <laughs> user interfaces. Like they say, the menus are just always ridiculous. Yeah. And like way too many. And it's like, isn't, where's the wabi sabi? Where's the, <laughs> where's the, where's the simple beauty here, guys? I this, mean, is, this is insane. Even, even like reality shows yeah. in Japan. Yeah. There's no, <laughs> the wabi sabi is gone within like, <laughs> <laughs> like the all the like the bright floor. I mean, it looks fine, but it's like it's great reading the, practice. It's great reading practice, but the first, until you get used to it, you're like, what am I supposed to focus on? Yeah, what is going yeah, on? I have yeah. so many questions. There was one game show I saw where the right question was like when they answered it correctly, it was also in red, and I was like, God, this is like. This is maybe this is like tangential to everything we're talking about, but it was just like red should be wrong, not correct. But mm. but anyway, I digress. No, I remember the first time I saw Nico Nico Doga, and I was just like, Oh I my can't god! See the video. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that shit was ridiculous. I'm like, how I can't see anything, but I just love I love Jikyo yeah. Play Doga, where it's, it's like you have people like it's now on YouTube more yeah. common. But at the time, Nico Nico Doga had the whole culture Mm -hmm. of like so it was fun to kind of watch people play video games and that's kind of how i related to a lot of japanese video games Mm -hmm. is watching japanese video game players talk about it and you just kind of like go along for the ride and Mm -hmm. it's like with american games i use like game facts and like walkthroughs but i felt like nico nico doga and such was like Uh, a very casual experience of seeing different japanese games Mm -hmm. and nico nico doga was one of the few places i could access japanese stuff me mm. here in the United States. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't always so easy. Now it's pretty wide open, but yeah. uh, not yeah. too long ago, it was pretty tough. <laughs> mm-hmm, definitely. Very limited options. Matt Alt, yeah. this uh, guy that we interviewed, he's he's a uh, he's like a minor celebrity in Japan, and he's oh. he's an author. He's in um, J- Japanology Plus on NHK. He's one of the hosts on there. There's a couple, mm-hmm. but. Um, he he was saying like back. This is connecting to your point earlier, Lena. The um, Japanese people for the longest time they're just making like shows and games just for them. Yep. You know, 
And then they just kind of, they weren't really even trying to get big internationally. It just kind of happened because yeah. everybody thought it was so unique and yep. you can really sense a different culture via anime or gaming or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I think it was kind of largely an accident, I think, in a lot of ways. <laughs> but that's so that's kind of there's some lesson there, like just make shit you like and then things will just like will fall into place. Maybe the other phenomenon like <laughs> the other phenomenon now though is Japanese culture has gotten so big internationally mm-hmm. and and also with the you know dissemination of of the internet and being everybody being thoroughly saturated in it now. Mm-hmm. It's this is kind of old man corner in a sense but it's not like it used to be where Japan was mm-hmm. so foreign and, so, and that it was like people loved it because it was so different. But mm-hmm. now as time goes along, you know, everybody's watching anime now and everybody plays Japanese video games. And like, w- I think we're starting to get to this nexus point where, and Matt Alt talks about this, we're not going to tell which is which at a certain point. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. Americans doing cosplay now, and we don't know if this part of gaming is from Japan or America. The Japanese are copying a lot of American gaming stuff too now. Like back in the 90s and that kind of time period, it was pretty, you know, cut and dry. Like this is, you know, this was an American game, this is a Japanese game. Game play, game style, art, everything was different about it. But now, mm-hmm. now it's like, you know, you can't, you can't tell for better or worse. I mean, you can still mm-hmm. kind of tell, but it's it's definitely not like it used to be. Yeah. yeah I, no. Oh, go ahead, Megan. I'm sorry. Um, so this really reminds me of the whole what is manga question. <laughs> like, yeah. Or the is Avatar yeah. the last airbender in anime? Yeah. That like yeah, yeah. got debated t- to hell and back. <laughs> and it's back again because now it anime is big and so everyone's like okay but also avatar the last airbender is an anime it's like no we we settled this like 10 years ago please <laughs> please do not resurrect that conversation but it does yeah. really remind me of that whole okay well what what makes a manga a manga because mm-hmm. they did like i don't know um if anyone read the maximum ride series by james patterson mm-hmm. they did a graphic novel but it's in a very manga esque style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the the uh, you know the the artist is uh, Korean, but like you mm-hmm. look at that that style and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, out of context. Yeah, Korean comics in the same like, yeah, style. It's a, it's a manga, pretty much. But like, is it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so I mean, about this, like all the whole American anime topic, I find fascinating because. Look, they're making good ones now. People seem to love Castlevania, et cetera. People love the boondocks, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, but awesome. the thing is, especially like, you know, with, with Mike and my background, like, and a lot of people, like, it's like people liked the anime, not just because of the art style, but because this was truly foreign. Mm-hmm. There's just some, this is like, this might as well be from Mars. I mean, you know, just an expression, mm-hmm. but like it was just so different and that's why we loved it so american anime they're sort of copying that what matt alt again matt alt calls that otherness Mm -hmm. and it's like it's sometimes cringe i think Mm -hmm. it's not always but it can be and i just feel like it i don't know if i'd call it cultural appropriation i wouldn't go that far but it's just like you're you're trying to copy being foreign and something's not right there. But then again, like, what are you going to do when an art style is super popular? Yeah. You know, it's a look. <laughs> what are you going to do? The content yeah. is really what's going to give something legs, right? But yeah. the aesthetics are going to catch people's eyes. And if you like that aesthetic and you can paint in that style, draw in that style, go for it. Yeah, but no. but also the the story content too though I mean there's mm-hmm. Japanese even the Japanese story mm-hmm. structure is four part instead of three this is mm-hmm. a fundamental difference between East and West storytelling as well yeah. are the American anime companies copying that too I don't know and just like the perspective and everything is just subtly or not subtly different I think <laughs> sorry right. go ahead it's, Lena oh yeah I feel like because we. Um, a lot of younger generations are fortunate enough to kind of grow up with anime, video games and such. From a very like equal standpoint, I feel like the people I've dealt with in college and such, 
they like know their Japanese classmates through college and other aspects. So it's more of like an equal like a relationship in terms of like appreciating a culture. And sometimes I feel、mm-hmm. like when we're kind of like grow up with it, we don't realize how like it's just so subconscious in our mind that we don't know how much it like gets to us. So、um, when I recently went to the Japan Foundation for their art exhibit, where、um, people who ha- who have disabilities they Presented their art, and it was、mm. it's in display, and it's good. It's a um, it's until December, Megan. Yeah, it's until till December. I want to say twelfth. Yeah, so, where is the exhibit? Until- Monday through uh Saturday. Yeah, six, so, uh, noon to six. Yeah, but what was what was fascinating, interesting to me was that a lot of the um artists were nonverbal or they couldn't move their body, but a lot of、mm. the color, the texture, and the cultural nuances behind their art. Felt very Japanese, so I was just asking, like the、mm-hmm. curator, one of the people, like it's so fascinating to me that even though there may be not be verbal or like understanding, it's fascinating how colors and all that kind of stuff gets preserved. And she was like, "Yeah, we try to not focus on a person with their disability, but focus on what do they personally want to do." So it's really interesting、mm-hmm. how even like, yeah, even in these Japanese context of like categorization, like. Art and culture may not easily be categorized, but it's so like it seemed. That it was just like I don't know where I'm going yeah, with this, no, but it just found, I just found it really fascinating that the culture like, runs deep, is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, like, like no that. What, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like no matter what, and sometimes the language. Like for myself, I speak Japanese, and Japanese was my first language. But because of that, like I get this expectation of. Be Japanese, or you're、mm-hmm. supposed to know everything Japanese, and it's interesting how sometimes,、yeah. like, yeah, the mannerisms or the way I may perceive or understand can come from a very Japanese standpoint because I grew up with a Japanese mother who lived in Japan for four, like over forty years, and I、mm-hmm. live, I had a grandmother, so it's really interesting that how like. No matter、so、how much I don't. So you're saying you don't see you don't see the stark differences maybe as much as somebody from from my background because they've been mixed from the get go. Yeah, it's kind of like、yeah. some people may have kind of like an already kind of like oh, it was just surrounded by them that,、mm-hmm. and it's great. I actually love it because it means that they can have a very、um, positive. They can start from very positive understanding about Japan and their culture and their、mm-hmm. art. And then with Japan being like the population is becoming smaller and smaller, now it's going to be a discussion of how can they work with other countries and how could they continue to preserve their art and tradition because younger and younger、um, yeah, generations are not able to preserve it in the way that like、mm-hmm. as before. So that's kind of like a yeah, what I'm curious about the next twenty to thirty years, how it's going to be. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. it's it's definitely you you become a native. Of the cultures that you're absorbing, you know. When、yeah. when I was growing up, I watched plenty of、uh, Godzilla and Speed Racer and Voltron and things like that, and it's like it all influenced me. It's just a part、mm-hmm. of me.、Yeah. When I got older, I started to learn like, okay, this comes from Japan and everything. But like when I was a kid, that didn't matter. It was just as it was just as me as He Man was. It just、mm-hmm. didn't. None of it mattered. It was all just a part of my own native life with art. And I yeah, think that、yeah. you're seeing, you're seeing the fruits of that. You know, as the, yeah, the younger、definitely. generations grow up with all sorts of different influences from around the world, with Japan being a real heavy hitter in visual、mm-hmm. aesthetics, yeah. Then、I、the work that s- they produce is going to reflect that. I would even say that, like our generation, we still see some of that、mm-hmm. already with the length of how much, how long Pokemon has run. <laughs> yeah, like there are there are there are people. Who think that Pokemon's American? <laughs> yeah, that's true. They have no idea,、mm-hmm. um, and、so、they just, just accept. Like, yeah, of course. Of if course they grow Pokemon. up, if they grow up with it from an early age,、uh, most people,、mm-hmm. a lot of people, probably don't.、Um, you know、uh, what you call it? They, they don't realize it because it's just been embedded in them since since kind of day one. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, and there's less of that because it's in an entirely fantasy world. Yeah. Unlike you know Yu-Gi-Oh, where、yeah. they do have to like wear their school uniforms and you know other <laughs> yeah, other、are. ones too, like Yu Hakusho. I know that's before all of that, but like yeah, <laughs> let's go fight Yokai in our school uniform. That's, that's Did you play、uniform. Pokemon, Mike? I only played、uh, Pokemon Blue. 
back when the Game Boy yes. Color. Like, it was funny because I remember reading an, a review on IGN that would have been like in 98 or 97. And I was just like, huh, this, this RPG sounds interesting. I'll mm-hmm. give it a shot. Why not? Because I was working a job where I was I spent some time at a desk and had to wait in between setups for like speaker systems and everything. So I was just like, yeah, sure. And I played it while I was at work in between jobs. And I'll, So and you knew I'll... about the game before the cartoon became big? Yeah. Yeah. And I okay, remember so telling I, some friends. I didn't. I, but... I just knew because my younger brother was getting into it during the first initial boom in mm. 98 or so mm. in America. And I, all, I was just a little too old for it. I was 14 when it came out. Mm-hmm. So like I was. I, I was like, too old for it, but I didn't know because I just thought it was an RPG. <laughs> I just knew it as a cartoon yeah. that came out with a video game. So I, I forget how it worked, but it came out like three years after Japan, like Japan was like 95 or something. Yeah. And then America was like much later and it was near the end of the game boy life cycle. Like the game boy should have been done. And then Pokemon (laughs) came, comes out and boom, it's like game boy huge again. Yep. Yeah. Sorry if you had more, man. I blurred it. Had to. No, I just, well, we've talked about this before, but yeah, I think that Pokemon is really the, the Trojan horse for the rest of Japanese pop culture. <laughs> it was like, I, here it is, man. So. This is this is what broke down the gates, and that's I mean, wide open. This is this is just kind of off the cuff, but I mean, look at you could look at the similarities between One Piece and Pokemon. Hmm. Really, I mean, they're both fantasy worlds. Mm-hmm. They've got an ultimate goal, but they've got to go on a journey to get there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm not saying, you know, the entirety of the Mugiwara Kaizoku are you know, Pokemon or anything, but you know, <laughs> I I mean, um, I, I can't speak to it because I've never really read or watched <laughs> one piece. Yeah, it's one fair. of those things that like, it's so hugely popular and it's been going for so long, but it's just, yeah. not. it wasn't for I know, me. I'm, I'm out of but, the loop on that one too, man. But yeah, yeah it's, I, was, I used to read out. it for so long. Like, cause it came out like 1998 or yeah, so. It's one of the big three. I, yeah. It's like Metante Conan <laughs> for me too. I grew up with it. It's still continuing. Yeah. And then One Piece 2, it still continues. It's mm-hmm. great that it still has a very huge cultural phenomenon. And it's, it's really fascinating to see that in Japan. Like, I feel like a lot of um, series continue for 10, 20, 30 years. And I'm just like, wow. We don't really <laughs> yeah. often see that in the U.S. Is you see there? it with you see it with American comic stuff, but I mean, yeah, but they have like separate arcs, and it feels like different. Right, like, right, right, right. They're not always connected. The Marvel ones too, so that's also well, fascinating. One of the big differences there is, like in America, the big comic companies, Marvel and DC, are generally right. The corporations own the characters and True, all of that yeah. and stories, so they're bringing in writers through you know the last hundred years or whatever. To, mm. to do different things but when it comes to most of the the structure of like the weekly serialized manga in japan they're creator owned so it goes yeah. through that's you know, good say like that's shonen good. jump or something but like what's his name Ichiro oda, oda. Is, yeah yeah right oda. like that's yeah. his that's his story that's his book yeah that's his character you know yeah. so that's good so it follows him through the years it's not like someone he's going to get taken off and the next arc is written by someone else entirely I saw yeah. a picture. I saw a uh, uh, TikTok of Sam, Samuel L. Jackson talking about One Piece on the Howard Stern show. Oh, he yeah. was like, he was like, Oda has written one of the best stories of our t- of the modern times. I was like, wow, <laughs> Sam Jackson loves anime, bro. <laughs> this is, but it was it was awesome. I'd never seen One Piece, but I love the passion. Yeah. yeah. I feel like One Piece is one of those um, mangas that I felt like they're all friends. Like, they all have the same goal. They all care mm-hmm. for each other. And, like, every, like, backstory is, like, you cry. Like, every story <laughs> I've read in One Piece, like, every backstory, I'm just like, oh, my God. So they really tuck to your hearts and that. Luffy is just genuinely a nice guy, and he really cares for everyone. And mm-hmm. it kind of just, like, yeah, accessible for whatever age. And I feel like with Japanese working culture and all that kind of stuff, having that dream, having that kind of unity, and having mm-hmm. that kind of like vastness, I feel like it brings kind of like light to people's lives in so many yeah. ways. I would say the the freedom aspect where you are exploring and something new. Yeah. Ah, uh, right. Okay. These these are the these are some of the main goals of art, right? Yeah. Isn't yeah. that the beauty of it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh you, man. 
definitely. So, so props Happy. to the Japan Foundation for promoting that. <laughs> <laughs> There's two two Japanese songs that make me think of exploration. One is the Chrono Trigger Corridors of Time thing. Mm-hmm. Like there's something so majestic and explore explorational about that. And the other one mm-hmm. was from uh, Wild Arms. The remember that oh, yeah. RPG, Mike? <laughs> yeah. That has this that opening, Wild Arms like, intro, man. Bluegrass yeah. sort of thing, but it's like, oh my <laughs> god! Like this is like the spirit, the pioneer spirit, like kind of thing. <laughs> I remember when I played it when I was a kid, probably in '96 or '7. Popped mm-hmm. it in. And like I'm listening to the intro, and my mom was like, she was like that. I like that song. Yeah, um, like it was random, that, she heard it was me. So good. <laughs> it was very good. Um, is there anything else before we're out of here, guys? Mm-hmm. No. Pretty good at I mean, if you're a teacher, feel free to apply for grants. Yeah. <laughs> um, at the great. Japan Foundation, and if you happen to be in LA from now until December, feel free to. Or mid December, feel free to stop in at the Japan Foundation. We're off of uh, we're kitty quarter in the LACMA, um, free exhibit. Nice, you know, noon to six. Yeah. What What is LACMA? Uh, Los Angeles County Museum. Yeah, art. Yeah. Art museum. Yeah, Los, Los Angeles <laughs> County Museum of Art. We're near the La Brea Tar Pit, so it's LACMA, La Brea mm-hmm. Tar Pits, and then like kitty corner. It's okay. us. Okay. A little hard to find from the street, but I've still never been to the La Brea Tar Pits. I need to go. Oh, it's definitely a great experience. And yeah, to add upon Megan's the Japan mm-hmm. Foundation, I feel like what I love about Japan Foundation, I still tell my former colleagues to this day, is that it like brings very access um it's very accessible for like even the lang- Japanese language like you know exchange mm-hmm. events. We, um there's one coming up in October, so it's kinda like anyone can come and explore and there's movie nights or movie days depending on the time but it's like great that japan foundation continues to find a way where you know it's it's a community based mm-hmm. and anyone can come and join and they're always there so please feel free to stop by that's awesome nice. thank awesome. you guys so much yeah thank you so Appreciate much for having us thank it's you been, so much. it's been a good yes, chat we've touched upon a lot of topics it's, yeah yes. that's great <laughs> Very I'm going to go find some Japanese teachers and tell them they need to get some extra money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, event grant. So the, if for event, uh, teaching materials, and salary assistance, those are coming up in uh, March, April for the okay. new year. So there you go. Good stuff. Nice. All right, guys. Well, I think that'll do it. All right. All right. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so that was a really nice chat with uh, Megan and Lena uh, from the Japan Foundation. Uh, they they gave some really good information, especially about the grants. I hope that if there are any teachers out there listening to this of the Japanese language, uh, that you can get something to help you with your professional development and uh, putting some food on the table too. Please do, guys. Yeah, it was it was cool to get the Japan Foundation's info out there and more JLPT info out there. Mm. I'm a professional JLPT taker myself. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I will be taking the N1 for the fifth time soon. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. But um, but yeah, uh, you know, uh, the podcast is called Gaming Guide. And if you don't know what that means, I mean, we're in season two, but maybe you found us randomly, right? Mm. So Gaiden means like supplementar, supplementary story, supplemental story, like the story outside of the story kind of thing. So uh, the side and stories. So the side <laughs> story, right? So um, I think that, yeah, we're, we covered like a little bit of the side story once again to the gaming world with this mm-hmm. stuff that Japan, I mean, it might be sort of tangential, but we did weave in, you know, some video game stuff in there as well. And the Japanese interest is peaked for a lot of people via video games so everything's uh, connected man <laughs> everything's connected so um anyway yeah thanks for uh stopping by and taking a listen and listening this far into the episode so uh yeah this is this is season two and please check out our other episodes and and subscribe if you can thank you thank you Thank you.